Hey everybody and welcome to Let's Look at Equilinox, which is uh, a late candidate for like feel good video game story of the year, or maybe just feel good video game of the year. Uh, developed over a period of several years by a fellow YouTuber who I very callously have forgotten the name of. My apologies. Equilinox is a meditative biome simulator nature simulator basically it's kind of like a city builder except you're not building a city you're building a woodland a grassland aquatic biomes etc etc trying to keep the ecosystem in balance but also like it's a game that's remarkably free of negative consequences which makes it a very pleasant meditative and I don't want to say casual, cause it, but it is. Actually, I, I don't think I'm afraid to say casual here, but it's not casual in the way that you might find um, something to be maligned, you know, like a match three game with predatory microtransactions. It's casual, because you can be 75% focused on it without your biome going up in a forest fire and punishing you, which a lot of city builders are... Not even just city builders, but strategy or tycoon games are like that. So it's very different. It's also $10. It has 97% overwhelmingly positive reviews on Steam right now. It's just a great story. I played uh, a little bit over an hour on my stream last week and am remiss to be waiting this long to do a Let's Look At. But here we are. World name. Let's look at world. Water options. Let's just say everything normal is fine by me and I'll generate the worlds here. Um, and... There are tasks in the game, uh, which will help me right off the bat do a good job. This is all procedurally generated, by the way. Uh, will help me right off the bat do a good job of at least demonstrating how the game works. So we'll just go with tasks right off the bat. Basically, it's very simple. We're going to be taking this world that you see right here, and we're going to be populating it with, with a variety of flora and fauna. Not just uh, plant species, but also, you know, animals, chickens, sheep in the water, seaweed, fish, etc., etc., And we can engage in a little bit of like light genetic, it's not really genetic engineering, but like selective breeding in order to get down a tech tree and then, you know, make the world more and more biodiverse, if that makes sense. So, uh, first things first, I gotta pick like an area where I would like to start building. And I like that we have an enormous, I mean, it's not even really a lake. I guess it is a lake because it's closed in, but this enormous lake is kind of interesting. We can have separated biomes by, uh, you know, the, the gap of the water between them. But let's start, like, maybe... Well, let me take a second here. This is a little bit overly unnecessary, but I was just seeing how high it gets. It gets up to, like, 40 meters. That's relatively good because we can have forests and we can have, you know, basically... I don't want to become a mountainous area because not a lot of stuff right off the bat uh, helps us there. So... This is going to be less of a critique, at least for the start, and more of just like a guided sort of playthrough to demonstrate how the game works. Because I'll tell you right off the bat, I like it a lot. I think it's, uh, I think it's great. I also think it's remarkably cheap and incredibly well received. I think if you're the kind of person that likes city builders, but sometimes gets frustrated by the fact that they can occasionally be a little bit punishing, um, you're going to like this a lot. Because basically, you're just watching your environment grow and grow and grow and grow and grow. Um, instead of worrying about, like, is a hurricane gonna hit? Does that sound boring to you? Maybe this isn't the right thing for you. But maybe it is. To begin a new ecosystem, start by planting some simple grass. So the way that we do that is we go to our plant shop. Uh, DP is our currency. I think it's diversity points, like biodiversity points. We're gonna plant some grass. And the cool thing is that once we plant grass, or anything, really, it will start to spread by itself. It takes a little while to grow at first, but we'll just put a little bit along the shore like this and we'll zoom in a little bit. You can get a little bit of an information panel here. Sometimes the clicking can be a little bit wonky, um, but you can get information on your plant and animal species on this panel. So its health is good. You can see its life expectancy is not very long, but that's okay because it's gonna propagate a lot. And we can speed up time here and you know, wait until it grows to completion. And then as we complete these tasks, we will continue to get uh, rewards that we can use to get a little bit further in. But I mean, I'm just gonna tell you right off the bat here, if I just hold the button down, you will watch grass uh, slowly, well, it's actually going fairly quickly here, propagate uh, over the course of our environment. And as it propagates, it also changes the properties of the biome that it's in. So for example, this is 36% grassland, it's dry, this is 54% grassland, this is 60% grassland. Previously, we were on barren land, so we're slowly making this a little bit more conducive for other life in the future. We're basically terraforming it. 
So we have a new task. Full grown daisy. Grow three fully grown daisies, it unlocks oak trees. Okay, I mean, that's easy enough. So we'll plant some daisies. At first, it's gonna seem uh, a little bit uh, too easy. And I mean, it's not a difficult game, but it does get more complex. So again, we'll just get a bit of a broader view of things here. Speed up time, and once we get three fully grown daisies, we'll be able to proceed. It's a game you can play at your own pace. You know, actually, like, I think a great metaphor for Equilinox is that it's kind of like, uh, it's like a digital fish tank. You know, the same reason I think that people get into fish tanks, you know, aquariums is, you know, you have something cool to display and it's living and you can watch it um, kind of move and change under its own direction or its own, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Its own volition. Um, that's kind of what's going on here, except in a digital sense. We'll take our reward here, oak tree, my first tree, and then get a half-grown oak tree, and also get it to environmental satisfaction of over 70%. And you can see when we complete this, we will get sheep. So first, we need to look at our plants, and there's an oak tree. What does it need? Woodland, oh, I'm sorry, habitat. Grassland, below 40 meters, and it should be placed uh, not in a desert, obviously. Now, grassland 53, grassland 46. Grassland 69, I mean, how could we not say that? So, just by placing it in, like, an area that it's happy with, it should get the 70% satisfaction, if not more. So we'll just wait for that to grow to, you know, at least half of its size. Trees live longer, but uh, obviously take longer to grow as well. And notice, you know, we got lots of grass. The grass is living and dying and spreading itself out. Um... The daisies are spreading out too, and there's some kind of natural variance that goes on. You can see there's like a huge gap in the middle here. We got no daisies, but we got kind of like two isolated islands of population here, which I think is just basically due to the, the natural variance in dice rolls of like the direction that the plants will propagate, and you know, you get the idea. If they propagate into an area that's not conducive for their, you know, desired habitat, they won't do as well. Our oak tree is happy, and we unlocked the sheep species, and now the game starts to open up a little bit. I think people will want to see sheep, so we're gonna start there. Grass tuft population will do itself, and we'll do genetic modification after, but first let's get some animals. Have three sheep in the environment, with an environmental sat satisfaction of over 70%. What do sheep like? Well, they need food. What do they eat? Honey? Grasses? Okay, so they'll eat grass, that's fine. They love to be in the grassland, and they like trees. So I think if we put a sheep here, it'll be relatively happy. And this is like, I actually want to check this for myself. I don't know if you need two animals for animals to start self-propagating. How are you doing? You're not that happy because you're not in a super suitable biome. I think that's because our grass is not really maybe doing as well as I'd like. I'm going to place some more here. Grass is relatively cheap. So why not, right? And the tree, again, it's going to spread out as well. I mean, in theory, if one grass is able to become more grasses, and one tree is able to become more trees, can one sheep become more than one sheep, at least digitally speaking? We're just kind of letting it ride for now. We'll just see a, a second sheep pop out of them at some point if it's going to happen. It's just that there's a certain satisfaction as well. I think it's partly like the the cool, uh, cute kind of like voxel sort of graphics and the animations as well, but it's just kind of satisfying to watch. I'm not saying I would spend an hour here just with the, you know, scrolling around with the camera to see my sheep having a fun time. I'm just saying. We got Rolex and Pearl. All right, so we got two sheep. They're going to continue to propagate. Are you happy? Oh, they're happier. Biome's only at 70%, but I mean, it did just pop into the world recently. Okay, so the sheep are gonna, they're gonna spread, they're gonna become more satisfied, presumably. Now we'll get into uh, selective breeding. So one of the ways that you can get new unlocks is not just through completing tasks, but also um, by going down what's essentially like, it's not really how this works, I guess, but uh, through an evolutionary tree. So we wanna be able to eventually make, you know, tulips, buttercups, pansies, but in order to do these, um, Hold on, I got it backwards here. In order to do these, we need to fulfit, uh, fulfill, I should say, some certain requirements. So in order to make tulips, we need to have daisies that are light blue. And uh, some nearby grassland trees, which I think this would count. 
This daisy, let me just see. You're close to death. Let me find a, a fresher daisy. This is a good one. Okay. So what we're going to do is selective breed. You can see their color right now is just like, uh, like a pale pink almost. What we're going to do is click selective breed. And then we're going to change the color. We're going to say, hey, you should only mate with uh, flowers that give you a chance to get this light blue. Please don't eat this flower. Please don't eat this flower. Move along, sheep. Okay, so now after spending that DP, if we just wait for a while, uh, we should see, well, I mean, we should see two things. One is, now that these sheep are fully grown, they should start creating more sheep of their own. And the other one is, eventually, you know, some pollination is going to occur. And you can see, check it out. We, we're naturally starting to get light blue daisies in the environment now. We also completed our sheep task. So what do we get? Birch tree, three tasks, 2,000 DP. Grass is going. Um, light blue daisy, excuse me. Oh, three fully grown light blue daisies. All right, so we're just going to speed up time and this should complete. And then this, the game actually does a fantastic job of uh, introducing the mechanics. And it's not that the game, we just completed that one, by the way. Uh, have three fully grown light blue daisies, yeah. It's not that the game uh, is necessarily that complex, but it does a really good job of having some guidance in the early game. And I think a lot of games that uh, are a little bit more casual or observational don't do a great job of that. I think they just go, ah, there's not that many consequences, figure things out for yourself, make mistakes, and sometimes that's uh, a valid or even, you know, a, a preferable way of doing things. But I, I really appreciate that there's guidance here. And you might be wondering, uh, you know, what happens? Can you get an ecosystem that's out of balance with itself? You know, the sheep have no natural predators. Can there be so many sheep that the sheep start to eat too much of the grass that they then start to starve to death? The answer to your question is I honestly don't know yet, but I haven't had that happen uh, in, pardon me, in like my hour or so of play so far. You definitely do get predators. Like if you go to other animals here, I mean, there's wolves, I believe. Give me a second. It's hard to identify. Yeah, wolves. I'm assuming wolves eat sheep. I'm assuming bears eat a lot of stuff, you know? Um, so they they presumably do uh, predate on one another. Uh, or prey on one another, I should say. But uh, I haven't run into a situation where the equilibrium of the ecosystem has been out of balance yet. Presumably, I guess it could happen because of the fact that the animals, if you look at them, they do have like a... Minimum requirement of food per hour, 3.0 food points, but it's never been an issue. Mostly, I guess, because these things eat grass. <laughs> and grass just kind of, it's self-propagating for now, at least, until maybe we get too many sheep. Anyway, um, so we can get a, an easy one here and get some mushrooms unlocked. Control a sheep. Take control of a sheep and ba. That doesn't count. Take control. Look at the controls. Ba is E. There you go. Might not have heard it too well. But I promise you it has been done. And now that we have mushrooms, you can see the game starts to accelerate pretty quickly here. Mushrooms. What do they like? They like to be in grasslands, forests. They like to be near trees. And they like to be below 60 meters. You know, we can definitely fulfill them on that. Let's put one here. And I'm assuming that they're going to spread like wildfire as time goes on here. What's our task for mushrooms? Oh, we have to evolve them. So the tasks get uh, increasingly complex as time goes on. So our only tasks right now are actually starting to be a little bit more difficult. So, um, for example, we need to have three red maple trees, three wobbly trees, and three wild mints. So we have to... Let's start with red maple. Find a healthy tree... Uh, you're doing okay, and then we'll look at, excuse me, how do I make a red maple? Apple, sycamore, elm tree. Sorry, your boy is confused. Um, red maple, wobbly, wild mint. Well, I'll tell you, we could probably make grass if we can find like a healthy grass. Healthy grass, please. Oh, that one just died on me. This one's good. Okay. You, let's evolve you into wild mint. It requires you to be 1.0 times, 1.05 times your current size. 
So we'll start selectively breeding for size, which is here. And it's going to cost us, I think, more DP the more we raise you. Oh my god, it's so expensive. And we'll also, because it's not really a, a heavy grassland right now, we'll keep planting some more grass. It's these dastardly sheep, okay? They keep eating more and more of my grass. Making life that much more complicated for their benevolent creator. Excuse me, uh, you just ate the grass that was supposed to be selectively breeding? Task complete. Oh, we got enough grass t uh, grass uh, tufts, I should say. Now we've unlocked stones. Okay. Now stones... They... Stones are important because aquatic... Well, I mean, some animals like them as well. Like, I think chickens like stones. But on top of that, uh, some aquatic creatures like stones. So I really want to get to the aquatic stuff uh, as soon as we can. Maybe instead of going for wild mint, we should try to evolve... Yeah, let's let's evolve wheat. Select a grass tuft and try to create wheat. Healthy grass? Oh, the healthiest of all grass. Evolve wheat. Needs three stones nearby. Now we're cooking. And this is kind of what I mean, that like, just by virtue of the natural progression of the game, it does a really, really good job of keeping you constantly moving upwards. And this is where, um, they ate the grass. That's alright, because we can go to a different grass. One that's healthy, preferably. Long life ahead of it. Long life. Long life ahead of it. Long life. Uh, long. Life ahead of it. You know what you're going to have to do. And continue the evolution process. Again, it's an abstraction of how things actually work in, you know, biology or botany or zoology. It's not really meant to be like, hey, this is a simulation. You can play with your PhD candidates. It's more like, um,. Again, it's again, it's kind of like a fish tank. And I think that the game could have stalled if they were just like, just watch things happen. The fact that there's kind of like a surrogated progress that happens via the task menu, I think helps satisfy that itch within a lot of us that's like, hey, stay productive. But then the game is basically just tricking you into relaxing. So I'm going to place some wheat and why not place it uh, in this like 100% grassland type area here. What is wheat like? Below 20 meters, like stones, can grow in any biome except desert, snow, jungle, and lush, and periodically produces fruit, which can be eaten by animals. Are you below 20 meters? Just barely, but at least you're going here. Okay. So, wheat population needs to get to three. We could probably... Well, let's just let the wheat propagate for a little while. Our mushrooms are not really spreading as far as I would have thought is possible, but I think it's because there's a little bit of a gap in our trees. By the way, simultaneously, and we should have done this earlier, we could say, okay, we got 4,000 DP. Why don't we go over here, and we're going to be like the space engineers from Prometheus. We're just going to place down a little bit of grass, and, you know, it's not that expensive. Let's, uh... Place down a little bit of grass uh, over here as well. The idea being that, you know, we can come back to that in five minutes and we got a brand new biome. Because I think chickens, they got a problem. I can't remember. Chickens and sheep don't get along for some reason. I don't remember why. Oh, it's because they don't like trees. So yeah, we, we kind of want like a separated region for chickens to live in. And you can see, like, even already the grass is spreading quite nicely, and even over here it's spreading nicely as well. But this will be like our little chicken enclave over here, so we can have good biodiversity while also giving them the, you know, the habitats that they desire. So we're just waiting for three wheats to come out. Then we'll put some wheat over here as well, because chickens need uh, wheat to live. I don't think they eat grass, I think they only eat wheat and wheat seeds. It's a pretty impressive... Uh, and a very ambitious effort from, as far as I know, a solo developer. Like, this is... It's very, very well done and, and incredibly robust. Is it as complicated under the hood as something like, you know, Factorio, RimWorld, etc., etc.? That I might stop short of, but so what? You know, it, it's still, it's a really impressive effort, I think. Uh, forget chickens for now. Let's start getting aquatic, okay? So, we're gonna go seaweed. What is seaweed like? Uh, they like... The riverbed, which makes perfect sense. So we'll place a couple of seaweed down here. 
Probably we don't need to place three. I'm being a little bit spendy. But that's kind of the beauty, if I'm being honest, of uh, Equilinox, is that you can pretty much play it however you want to. You know, in a lot of strategy games, and this is not really in the same vein. We just got that complete and now we can get Trout. Um, it's not really in the same vein as something like Civilization, but in like Civ 4, I'm thinking like, you know, oh, you didn't build a temple as your first uh, improvement? Well, you might as well restart the game. In Equilinox, it's so forgiving, and I think it works really well um, for a game like this. You know, that you can be like, okay, you spent a little too much DP, just hold the fast forward button for, you know, 30 seconds and you're back. It's not like you're gonna do anything, as far as I know, that's gonna, like, uh, ruin your run. Okay, so I mean, we need the trout to be here. Let's place a trout in the riverbed, and all of a sudden, you know, even... What are we, we're only like 20 minutes into the episode, or 20 minutes into the, uh... Video here, and you can see our little trout going around. And we got a pretty, you know, diverse biome. We got a riverbed, we got a grassland. It's, it's sort of spreading over the mountain here, although this is as tall as the oak trees like to get. Um, we've never had three wheat plants, have we? Or did we complete wheat breeder? We did complete wheat breeder. Did I get my... I did get my reward, because it gives you chicken and seaweed, you fool. Okay. Um, what are we likely to do next? Probably, um, we could... I think we can get three satisfied chickens before the video's over. So what... how do you do that? Well, chickens like... well, they don't like, they need wheat to survive. Mutation! A strange grass tuft has been born. What's your problem? You're larger? You're slightly less edible? Are you a different color? It is kind of hard to tell. Maybe you are a slightly... you are a slightly different color. Hold on, does that give us the ability to maybe grow wild mint or oregano? No, it doesn't. You need to be mud green to grow, to grow some oregano. Anyway, let's get three satisfied chickens. Uh, I think at this point, you probably know whether it's the kind of game you like or, uh, or the kind of game you're maybe not that big of a fan of. I think it actually does a really good job of straddling the line between, you know, a, a play casually, consequence-free, like a walking simulator, basically, but also being a purpose-driven strategy slash city builder tycoon sort of game. I know we're not building a city, obviously, but a lot of the same elements are kind of abstracted here. Um, so I, I actually think Equilinox is great. Excuse me. <laughs> my, my wheat. I spent 900 DP on that wheat. Where? Hold on. <laughs> Please, come back. I guess you're not growing overnight, or I don't know, maybe it was just the, the lighting screwing me up there. I just want to make sure the wheat has taken hold over here before we, uh, put our chickens over here, because our chickens are not gonna be satisfied if they got nothing to eat. And if they got nothing to wheat, they got nothing to eat. As you can see on the right side of the screen, our fish going strong. Can I just see like two wheat plants? That's it, I see one. I see zero. Are you wheat? You are wheat. What's your problem? I'm an idiot. Okay, so this is where, like, and this happens in pretty much every, uh, in every video I ever do. Eventually people who are watching it but have never played the game become better than me. Wheat likes stones. The wheat was dying out because its habitat was not suitable. It didn't have rocks around it. I don't know if wheat actually needs rocks to grow in real life. I don't know, maybe it makes sense. The leaching of some minerals into the soil or something like that. All of a sudden, the wheat is doing a hundred times better. And your boy sees the opportunity for three satisfied chickens. We're only placing two right off the bat, but... Oh, they start as eggs, by the way. There they go. And once we complete this, I think that'll probably be where we, uh... Where we call the, uh, the video. Suffice it to say, I really like Equilinox. Have three chickens in the world with an environmental satisfaction of over 70%. Uh, I like Equilinox a lot. I think if, uh, if you like what you see, you should pick it up. This is just the very, very, very start of things in Equilinox. And one thing I have not done a good job of showing off, I think, is how you get progress. I know we showed evolution and selective breeding, 
But there's a lot more of that that goes on later. Like, again, the tasks become progressively much more complex. So, like this one, four trout, four redfish, four kelp, four water lily. So if you want to get that, you'd find like a healthy seaweed and you'd be like, okay, you got to become kelp. But first to become kelp, we need to put large rocks down near you. So we'd start by going like, uh, you know, stones, stones. Do those count as large rocks? No, they do not. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Large rocks. All right. Now you're good, but then we got to go to selective breeding. We got to get you to be or to make children, I guess, that are at least... 4% larger than your current size. So then you got that under control. And then you look at the trout. You find a healthy trout. And you go, okay. You need to make redfish. For that, you need to be pink. And you need some kelp. So we'd go over here and we'd start, you know, selectively breeding you. And we'd be trying to make some, uh, you know, pink fish in the future. And it's a little expensive. But you get the idea. It has that same kind of progressive growth. Um, that's a, a task for getting a certain amount of DP. You get the same kind of progressive growth that you get out of... Um, out of a, a, you know, your classic sort of tycoon game where, you know, the the more money you have, the more you can invest in things that give you more money in the future that allow you to invest in blah, blah, blah. Um, so you get the idea. Hold on. Do we have a pink trout? This is my one complaint, by the way. My well, two major complaints. One is it's hard to click on things in the water. The, uh, maybe if you have your camera like straight up, it's a little easier. My other one is that you have to actively watch and be like, okay, do we have a pink? Uh, do we have a pink fish yet? Even watching for color is not that problematic. It's more like watching for a grass or a seaweed that's 1.04 times the size of the previous one. Goodbye, fish. We hardly knew you. Apart from that, though, and this one is probably going to make it. Oh, maybe not. Um, apart from that, though, Aquilinox. A lot of fun. Really cheap. Oh, my God. The chickens have bred out of control. Um, and if you, uh, you find yourself with, uh, some time on this holiday break, if you're lucky enough to have one, check it out. I'm eager to play more, and I hope I get the opportunity to do so. What I have played so far has been unbelievably pleasant. I think that at its distilled core, the best thing I can say about Aquilinox is that it's just an incredibly likable game. I don't know if it's gonna be game of the year for many people, but I think that everybody who plays it will find something to enjoy about it. And I don't think that's true for every game out there. So for now, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the episode, and of course there will be a link in the video description below to pick up Equilinox. Well liked, including by me, very cheap, and uh, relaxing and pleasant experience. If you enjoyed the video, click the like button, it helps out a great deal, and of course subscribe if you want to see more in the future, and follow me on Twitch where I do all sorts of content, including first impressions of games like Aquilinox. Twitch.tv slash Northern Lion for now. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.